we're ready to start turn one. Um, there's a couple of different things to note. Oops, I was playing around with this <laughs> earlier. Okay. So we've got everyone set up here. There's a few um, bits and pieces we missed off from the basic setup. And that's because there was actually, whilst I make a bunch of noise, some errata already that was put out with the game when it first came out. These aren't the mission that they enter, as I had originally thought. This is how many you have on the mission, I believe. Or it's something like that. Uh, it, they're supposed, everything comes in on there. Uh, so basically what we've got here is um, we've got a heavy machine gun team. Um, there's a full mortar section that we've got as well. And each platoon I have assigned with them um, ha has an anti-tank weapon. I just kind of put it off to the side just so you could see it. And then first platoon has a light machine gun. Second platoon also has a light machine gun. And heavy machine gun um, is assigned to third platoon. Um, the mortar section is a full mortar section and from what I can tell they're going to act independently just because they have, I, I, I'm not sure, or frankly they're going to go with third platoon if we do platoon movement and stuff that's what they're going to do, they're going to be stationed in with them, hopefully going to set up a good fire position in the orchard grove so they can attack Oops. Um, both the gully over here which is objective one and um, the open fields which is objective two. So that's kind of the plan there. I know it's kind of hard to see. We've got a little bit of glare going on from the lighting. We'll try and get these. So I've got the CO down here on this card. We'll get When we get off this card, you'll be able to see those a bit better, what we've got down here. Um, but basically, uh, we'll just get cracking with turn one. We've got a little turn track up here. Um, so we're just gonna kind of pull a card and see what we get. I'm gonna, before we do anything, I can pick up the last one. We're gonna just shuffle these briefly. And we're gonna draw a card, and this is for the CO. We're gonna draw his command card this is how many commands that he can give out to subordinates. And we're looking up at this number here, and we drew a two, which is frankly pathetic. So, so it's gonna be a long slog, this one. So we're gonna discard that. We kinda look over here, this little chit, COHQ act commands available. He has a whopping two, which is very bad. So he can issue two commands, he can activate two people. So what he's going to do is he's going to activate um, the second platoon HQ right here. And he's also going to activate, let's do first platoon HQ as well. So that's going to cost him one command and two commands. And his activation is complete. We'll just flip that over and we can line up. We've got first platoon and second platoon their little chits here, and we'll pull for each one of those in turn when we're ready. So we'll start with first platoon, which is over here, trying to get these guys to kind of advance nicely. Hopefully find some cover. First platoon, activate, and they're going to have three commands. A little bit, a little bit better, still quite slow. So first platoon, we're going to send out a scouting party. We're going to send out first squad. I think that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna take it very, be very cautious because I'm a huge wuss. They're gonna go there, do a little bit of scouting, hopefully find some, some cover there. So first platoon had three commands. Their first command was to send out first squad, which they did. So there's two commands left. Um, when, a, when a team moves out, when they're moving, they get this exposed marker, which is a negative two. It means it's easier to hit them, um, so not great. So what we're going to attempt to do with another command is we're going to attempt to have them find cover. So platoon leader says, go out to the farm, find some cover. So they're going to attempt to find cover with an action. So that costs us an action to do that. 
and we're gonna draw cards. And so there's three cards available for us to draw, and we're trying to find um, uh, the keyword cover. So we draw one, and there's nothing. I can see how this is going. Draw another one. Oh, we've got to reshuffle the deck. We'll do that in a second. This doesn't count as one of the cards we're going to pull, so we're going to pull two more. Nothing here, and nothing here. So our, <laughs> our squad does not find cover. That is very bad. And uh, immediately, as soon as we've done that, we're going to reshuffle this deck. So we're going to put all those terrible cards back in there. Which is fantastic. So great. So, first squad looking quite slim. Um, they just kind of ran out into the buildings. Weren't able to find any decent cover in the farm. Um, so they, they're quite exposed right now. Um, you can't attempt the same action twice. So they're going to go ahead, go ahead and just uh, be quite worried where they are. Hopefully we don't actually have any contact, but we'll see. Um, this final command that First Platoon have, we're going to save it. So we're just going to leave them on the track. Um, first Platoon, their, um, their squad leader is, well their Platoon HQ is green. And so green units can save um, three commands a day or per, per turn during the day kind of thing. So they're going to save that over for next time, hopefully we do a little bit more. Um, so. Not great for first platoon. Uh, we're going to draw a card for second platoon, and we draw three commands. So they too have three actions to deal with. Second platoon has three actions there. And frankly, we're going to do a very, very similar thing. Um, they're going to send out first squad of second platoon into into this farm over here. Now you'll notice this farm has a multi-story building. So if we can get into that cover and find the multi-story cover means that gives us some height advantage when we're attacking, which is quite nice. Um, might not come into play in this instance, but it's something to think about for the future. If we can kind of find some high cover, bring up our LMG and stick that in the, in the bell tower, so to speak, we could have some real fun, I think. So, again, they moved up, so they get one of these exposed markers. Again, easier for them to hit as they're running. And we're going to do exactly the same thing with their second command. They're going to go ahead and try to find cover. Uh, same instance, they're going to draw three cards, looking for at least one cover. So we've got, look at all these three. Once again, not a single cover icon, which is very demoralizing. Currently we're just running around, kind of like headless chickens in this instance. Um, and that's basically it. Um, no one else has uh, kind of commands that they can do. The CEO did not get good orders from Battalion, is, is kind of what you would say that that is. And so then we go to an initiative phase. And to start with, um, we go with 3rd Platoon, because they didn't receive any commands from the CEO. They get to draw a card, and they're going to get the worst number. So they're only, <laughs> only going to get one command which is, again, shocking. So in this instance, frankly, it would be foolish of them to do anything. Um, so third platoon are just gonna save that command. It is really what they're gonna do. They're not gonna do anything else, because uh, it's one command, we'd send a guy out and he'd be exposed. He doesn't even have a chance to get cover, so we're not even gonna deal with that. Um, and then we're gonna activate the CO staff as well. Um, and the CO staff is basically XO and first sergeant. When it's a, when you get to basic, basically, you have these impulses, um, when you activate things with those cards, after that everyone gets this uh, initiative. The CO staff, which is the XO here, and the first sergeant over here, um, they don't get a card draw, they just get one command each. So I'm actually going to put those on here, um, and frankly we're going to save those for next time because we, I think we need to have, have a better card draws to really make a good push to get us in a good position. I'm being very, very uh, cautious, uh, and this is a game where caution can help you in the sense that it's very easy for things to go terribly, but 
you know, you can't wait too long because you only have, in this mission, 10 turns to get up, get your objectives and, and call it good. There is a time element to this one. Um, so with all that done, that's basically, there is a general initiative phase. So you kind of do all of this stuff, do all those commands, and then you do pull one for general initiative. And this is kind of like, you know, everyone can kind of, kind of, you can divvy these up how you want. And it's everyone uses a little bit. So we had a good draw on that. So because this is a new impulse, um, these general kind of initiative command points can actually be utilized by these two guys that are exposed. Um, so you have that initial, you kind of have like the, the CO impulse and the platoon commanders or whatever active impulses. Then you have those initiative impulses where you kind of don't get good orders so you kind of make do. And then you have this general initiative impulse. So you, can, you can't do the same action twice in the same impulse. This is technically a new impulse because uh, it's the general initiative impulse. So they're going to go ahead and try to find cover again desperately. So again, over here, we're going to pull three cards. And we have one. All we need is one. You need one keyword that says cover. And the good news is, is that we find it. So we're just going to dig up a cover icon. And they are in, um, let's see, they are in a building, um, so they're going to get, where is it, let me get the right one, this is, they are in light building cover, which is a plus two, it negates that negative two, um, next round that negative two is going to go away, so they'll be in just plus two cover, right now it's a wash because they were running out in the open into the building, so that was good, uh, we're going to do the same thing over here, we're going to draw three cards, and we have a lot, of, a lot of things that we don't want to see, but at least it gets those contact cards out because we're going to draw for contact here soon. So these guys still don't find cover. And um, we do have three other impulses. So I think what we might try to do is we might be gutsy and we might actually send up um, first squad from third platoon. They're going to move and be exposed. And they're also going to try and find cover it's going to be three cards at this one. And they do find cover. That's good. You just need one, remember. And the cover that they find is just a normal, if it's kind of got this little bush tree symbol here, they're going to go into normal cover. Not as good. So they're still, they're still at negative one because they've been running out in the open there. Um, so that's basically it. Um, these commands can't be saved. So we use what? One, two, three, four, there's one left. Frankly, I don't want to do anything with it. So the last command is uh, wasted there. And we will call that good for that kind of section there. Um, from there, uh, it, this is an offensive mission, as in we're kind of going out to go and do that stuff. Um, we would check for enemy HQ events. There's a chart to roll on, but you don't do that in turn one. Um, and then there's an enemy activity check segment. Um, you check every enemy unit on the map, uh, but there aren't any enemy units currently. Um, so what happens is that we go to... Then, then there comes the phase where you can't take prisoners or you retreat and you kind of do that mutually. And I think what we're going to do now is we're going to evaluate the potential contact markers. There's some kind of steps in between here, but we don't have a lot of activity on the board, so we're just going to check the markers. And like we said, we had these potential contact C markers, and we, uh, we've we moved in one, two, and three of those, so we're going to check all of those. And to do that, we're going to determine randomly which one goes first. So we draw a card. <sighs> we're going to have to reach <laughs> reshuffle here in a second. So we draw the card, and we look under the three column. And we're going to activate number three, one, two, three. So this is the one that's going to go off first. Before we do that, we're going to reshuffle this deck. And you might want card sleeves for this game because you will reshuffle this deck a lot. It will happen. You just go through it. You'll draw a lot of cards and you go through it a bunch. I'm going to definitely get myself some sleeves here in a second. Um, so we're in a farm. Our guy doesn't have any cover. 
Um, so it could go quite poorly because we're exposed. We were just running around next to the buildings trying to get in, I guess. Um, so what, we'll kind of figure out what we're doing here. Um, so we have a potential contact C and you basically, you're going to look in your briefing booklet for the mission. Remember this is mission one. Um, and what we do is we check to see if there was any, um, if there was any contact in the first place. So to do that, we draw a, a number of cards equal to the contact level. And the contact level, we'll just dig it up here. There's a really good play played here. Okay. So we've got this right here. So this is the type of potential contact marker. We've got potential contact marker C. Currently there's no contact on the board. So we're going to look at four cards. And if any one of those says contact on it, then we go ahead and we have enemy contact. So here goes nothing. We got a cover, finally. There it is. Great. Useless now. Two rallies, and we're going to free shuffle the deck again. So the fourth card is a nothing. So with all four of these cards, no contact, it would say so at the top. So that's good news. These guys kind of escaped scot free. There was no enemy contact there. So they were just running around in that farm. Um, luckily, there were no enemies there. So we just kind of removed that marker and basically. That space we kind of occupy that much easier and safer for us to be there. Now there's not, you know, we eliminated the option of there being a German patrol there or something like that. So we do the same thing. For, we've now got one and two. So we draw again, and we look under the two column, and we've got a two here. So we're gonna do this was number two. We're gonna resolve this potential contact here again. We'll just refer back here. Same same instance. We're in the. Uh, no contact, potential marker C, so we're going to draw four cards and do that again. One, two, three, four. And there it is. The dreaded contacts right here. Again, it doesn't matter how many contacts you have. As long as there is one contact, you have a positive contact. So, this is where we're going to dig up this chart here. So we have potential contact C down here and this is what we're going to roll on. So we're going to roll uh, on the 10 column of the card and that's what we're going to go with. Hopefully we don't get something just terrible. Okay, so we rolled a 10 and we on the 10 column we rolled a 3. Hit back to our card here. Potential contact C, 3 is incoming mortars. So you would basically say, yeah, we're, we're bombing into here, um, and somewhere the Germans kind of had a sparter and they've got a mortar section or something zeroed in on us. So what we do is we consult the uh, incoming mortars on the table, and it tells us kind of exactly what that looks like, which there's, kind of, there's a really good play, play card here. So we've got incoming mortars, and we're going to place a, a VOF, which is a volume of fire. Um, the units are spotted. No, we have no idea where they are. Um, they're, they're at max line of sight. So we're going to place them as far away as possible from our guys, but still within range that they could hit. And we're going to put an incoming marker here, um, with, with, which has got some bits and pieces. And we're going to put out a spotter as well. So let's get that done. So... Um... Yeah, not not good. Basically, this is where things start to get a little bit complex. Um, so, like we said, there was there's incoming fire from a basically an unknown mortar spotter. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down exactly what it says to. Um, there's a few things that are gonna tell what we do. So we've got the incoming marker. Uh, this is NCM negative three. Um, I don't, I don't have an incoming that's NCM negative three that I could find easily. Um, so just using my airstrike, we're looking at this negative three modifier here. That's what is going to strike our men, which is very, very bad. Um, so that's going to, we're going to put that here as a denotation of 
where uh, kind of what the fire is and we also have this counter which is it says PDF which is primary direction of fire this we're going to point into the card from whichever direction the fire is coming from so where's the fire coming from you ask well we are going to find out uh, so there is a chart on which we roll and that's what's going to kind of tell us where they go so got ourselves a chart here and we just draw a card and roll a number so we roll on the 10 and we roll the 3 and if we look at the 3 table on here it says it's going to be at the front at maximum possible line of sight and so this is where we have to remember kind of those line of sight rules that we talked about um, we can always see through these two greens but these like you can't go through you can so you can go in adjacent but you can't go through a card that's got greens on both sides so it's got to be in front and max LOS even it you know the mortar's firing from wherever but it max LOS is actually just adjacent because we can't put the spotter here because he can't see through this orchard grove so we've got our little mortar spotter lying in the trees right here and so our primary direction of fire that's incoming over here, that's where it's coming from. Now, if we remember from the little card, and this is, again, something very important to take care of. Uh, so this is the incoming mortars that we're doing. They are not spotted. So they can see us, but we can't see them. So that little potential contact marker that we had, we're going to put it on top of our mortar guy, just as a mnemonic just to help us remember um, what we're doing there, that he's unspotted. We're gonna have to spin an action to see where he is, to try and find him, and then we can lay down fire and try and take him out. Because um, potentially, this is automatically gonna go off. He was waiting for us, we walked right into where they were zeroed in. He's gonna attack us, but in the future, he's gonna have to call those in. It's not kind of automatic every round. Uh, so we, we might get a reprieve if the cards are nice to us, although so far, that has not been the case. Um, now we don't actually resolve this combat quite yet because we still need to resolve this potential contact marker. We do all the potential contact markers and then we do kind of all the combat and bits and pieces like that. So there's only one of these left. We don't have to roll for it. Uh, we're just going to resolve it. So we're going to uh, once again, so, so now we get into the interesting stuff, right? So now um, we have, if you look on this card, we have one friendly occupied card is under a VOF marker. Well, we have that now. This guy is under a VOF marker. This is a volume of fire marker. It's a special one, but that's what it is. Um, so in that instance, we have the activity level is contact. So now we're going to roll on the C chart here. So we're only going to pull three cards instead of four, so it's less likely that we're gonna find something here. I'm really hoping that we don't, otherwise we might get into really bad shape very quickly. Oh, of course. So we do find contact in this card here as well. Now luckily we were able to find some cover. So at least, you know, we're not gonna be entirely hosed in that particular instance. And we just go right back to this chart and we're gonna roll on this table once again to see what we find. And we roll on a 10 and we find this is so bad. We rolled a two. That is so bad. <laughs> Which is basically the same thing, but it's artillery. So, yeah, oh geez. We're just going to get slaughtered. This is going to be ugly. I can already tell you that. Which is my life in this game. I don't know if I've ever had a game that went particularly well. So I don't, again, I don't have a, I don't have a artillery four mark that I find. So this is a four. We're just looking at the VOF, is, an, is that negative four? That's what we're looking at. And that's because on here, we've got incoming artillery, the, neg the net combat modifiers that negative four, that's really what we're looking at. Um, and there is an artillery FO spotter, similar, <laughs> similar to this guy, um, our little mortar spotter. So let me dig out an artillery one for us. Let's see, RG. 
So this is freaking 105 millimeter cannon to zero in on us, so this could be very bad. And we are going to place him once again according to the uh, to the uh, where, where was it? The placement table. Where am I looking? Unit placement table down here. So we're going to roll another card. Oh, we have to reshuffle the deck again. Looking under that 10, and we rolled a 9. So this is going to be right front at max LOS. So that's fascinating. And this is part of what I love about this game. That was seemingly random, but what it does is we've got, this is right, this is front, this is front right. And so you end up with these really cool little situations. So in this orchard, there's an artillery spotter and a mortar spotter. They were both sat there waiting for us. And I just think that tells such a cool story where this is where the ambush was, um, that's where they're trying to get us. Again, he's unspotted, um, just like the little, kind of the card said. Uh, Max LOS again, we can't go through to here, so this is where he has to go, because he can't see, you know, Max LOS over here, he can't see that. So that's, this is the maximum he can be at. And we're also going to put one of those PDF markers down as well. So we've got PDF coming on this angle as well. So, at this point, now we start to get to uh, um, resolve the combats. So I think we've done all the potential contact markers that we can possibly stand. And I can tell you now, we're about to get wrecked, which just doesn't feel good. But this is why you only scout with one guy, because, you know, normally, oh, you might take some wounds. If you were getting attacked by a rifle squad, you know, one guy gets hit, it's not that bad. Artillery and mortar fire incoming. It wrecks all of your squads. It's so it's very bad um, So we've evaluated all of the potential contact markers now. We're gonna go for some combat uh, Basically at this point If you have guys that are pinned, but they don't have the volume of fire markers Like if you'd killed them before and they were still pinned they become unpinned don't have to worry about that um, we resolve any flame attacks, so if you have flamethrowers and stuff, those go first. You just run into a pillbox and flame it to death before they can fire back, which is nice. Now we're going to determine NCMs, and we draw action cards to determine kind of what happens. So, um, basically, we have two combats to do, so again, we're going to shuffle these, and then we're going to roll to see which one we do first. I don't, I mean, they're, they're both terrible, frankly. Like, this one, they've got better cover, but this is a worse modifier. These guys have worse cover, but this is just ever so slightly better modifier, so they're both going to be terrible. It's just my horrible, horrible rolling. And sometimes this can be a very, very cruel game like this. You just take a step out and you get absolutely gutted. So we might have to be sending out um, people to recover litter teams here very quickly, depending on how badly this goes, which typically when you get net combat modifiers, things usually go very badly um, if, they're, if they're very, very heavily, heavily negative. So, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll, this is gonna be one, this is gonna be two. So we're gonna look under the two section and we're gonna roll number two first. So we're gonna resolve the mortar fire here in the orchard. And basically to do that, we determine the net combat modifier. And that's what all of these chits basically add up to. Um, so you've got this negative three here from the actual fire, and if we looked at our mortar spotter, he's got that negative three on him. That's really what that is. Um, this is mostly a mnemonic in this instance. If you had real airstrikes and you were attacking tanks and stuff, that negative three is would supersede a negative on a on a spotter because a spotter can't shoot a tank basically. Um, so we've got a negative three, <laughs> very bad. And a negative two, so we've got negative five, plus one for our little tree of cover. So we're looking at a, um, yeah, that's so bad. We're looking at a negative, um, negative four on that. And we also have, uh, this is, I believe, burst fire, which is also very bad, as the, uh, as the mortars explode in the trees and cause extra damage to us. So yeah, we've got this negative one burst modifier, so if we end up as a negative five after all that, which is truly horrendous. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a card, and we're gonna consult the card to see what it says. And we're looking at the negative five 
option. Oh, fantastic. We can't go to negative five, it has to be a negative four, which is, if you look, the worst possible outcome. Um, you know, you can get up into the positives nicely, but this is just frankly atrocious. So we are hit. Nothing to be done about that. We know we're hit. So what we do is we draw a second card to determine what the hit does. And we're going to look at this hit effect section down here. And we're going to remember to kind of consult our chart here. So I think we're looking at, this is third platoon. Uh, and this is first squad, third platoon. They are line quality. So we're going to look under the line and we're going to look at C. And as you can imagine, the C is a casualty. I believe, which is very, very bad. Um, so, we have a chart. Let me see if I can find it quickly. Okay, if it's, if it's not on a chart somewhere, so we've got C, casualty, um, this, convert the step to a casualty unit. Casualties last the duration of the mission and cannot rally. They can neither move nor fight. You should have other units evacuate them as soon as possible. Do not resolve combat against casualties. So basically, and we're gonna dig this out here, um, they, they basically are dead. Um, they're alive technically, but for the purposes of the game, they might as well not be there. So, absolute disaster. This cover mark is gonna stay here, because we know that there's cover there. These guys are entirely removed. That was a, a, a three-step squad, and they are um, basically, uh, they, they drop a casualty. So, we have this flips from a, th from a, a three side to the two side. And we have, oh, where have I put it? And then we've got a casualty marker as well under there. And we're going to leave them under there because that's the most that can be under there still. But th that casualty step is functionally useless. We're going to have to bring them back to safety. They basically leave them there. They, they can't do anything. Um, so, not great. Losing a step there, that's not what you want to see. Uh, what we'll do uh, over here, so if you would have had multiple units, so if we'd have had second squad and third squad up there, each of them are going to take, I don't know, you just end up, it's, it's brutal what can happen to you. Um, over here we're going to do a very similar thing, because um, that's basically, that's the end of that. We resolve that combat, use the hit effects, and that's kind of what happens. Um, over here we've got our artillery. He's got a negative four, and we're in a building which is a wash because we were exposed. So if we weren't exposed, if we'd have had an extra turn in there, we'd have had a plus two, so this is only a negative two modifier. So you can see getting the covers very good. Alas, we could not do that in time. He was zeroed in on the farmhouse and we walked right into it. Um, so we're gonna roll on the negative four table. We don't have a burst marker on this card. Remember, we have one here, so it's just at negative four, but negative four is basically the highest or the lowest than that combat modifier can go. So we roll, it's invariably going to be a hit. But it could have been a pin. You know, this is a good card. Lots of misses, lots of pins, only one hit. Still, we're in extremely unfavorable territory here, and we roll another hit. So we drop that, and we pull another card. Again, these guys are a normal platoon, they are line quality. So we consult the card, line quality, and we have is that a, we have P, F. And so you do both of these things. So what that means is the P and the F. So we're going to convert oops, one of, so again, this is a three-step unit, those three little dots. We're going to convert one of those steps to a paralyzed team, which, very, very bad. Right here, they become paralyzed. So we're going to flip that to a two side. And then the F is they create a fire team. So we're going to flip them. Basically, they go to a one step unit and create a fire team. Um, basically, you got two steps here. We flip the, the last step becomes a fire team. But there's three steps, so we're left with two fire teams. Oop. And these are kind of just generic and basically not very good and quite weak and uh, a paralyzed unit here. And paralyzed units um, are basically entirely useless. Um, 
as you can imagine. We also have to kind of get those guys off the board. Uh, it's impossible to kind of improve us. Yeah, again, not very good standing where we're at. So we've got our fire teams and we're going to stick those under our marker here. And we're going to weep. Basically, we have a guy paralyzed and our, 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 the rest of our squad broke up into ineffectual fire teams. They're much less good. It costs them commands to do. Not, not a great situation to be in. Um, that's where we're at with that. Um, that's the two comets that we had to do. And basically, that's, uh, that's the end of the turn. You have a small cleanup phase. Um, we get to shoot back uh, later on. Kind of in the next turn, we have to go and find those guys. We have to spend commands to do that um, and kind of hunt them out and kill them so we can stop that firing coming. So that is the end of turn one.